It should have been the happiest day of our lives. Esther and I were to be wed in the middle of August after a month's long courtship. The plans had been made, the feast was being prepared, and I was a nervous wreck. How could I not be? We formally met last fall at the Harvest Festival, although we'd been aware of each other our whole lives. In a small town like Spruceville, Ohio, everybody knew everybody. Her father didn't like me, which I suppose is common for those who have daughters who fall in love. Her mother was too busy taking care of the younger children in the family to pay any mind to what her eldest child was doing with her life. When I wasn't working on my family's farm, I would walk over to see Esther. She was always smiling and usually surprised to see me, especially when the snow was blowing and most folk elected to stay indoors close to a fire. The more time I spent with her, the more I knew she was the one for me. As the ground thawed and the flowers began to bloom, I started working up the courage to ask her father for her hand. I'll never forget the day I decided to do it. I rode over to their house, wearing my Sunday best, and ready to do whatever it took to get his blessing. My bravery quickly faded, however, when I walked into the barn and saw him standing near his horse with a rifle. It turned out he was getting ready to go hunting, and he invited me along. I knew I couldn't say no, even if I wasn't properly dressed for the occasion. As we rode out, he asked me if I had come over to see his daughter again. Stumbling over my words, I told him that I had, in fact, come to see him. When he didn't say anything in return, I carried on telling him how I loved his daughter and how I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. I wasn't sure if I was rambling on too much or if he just was not listening, at least until we reached a clearing where a large buck was standing at least a hundred yards away. Esther's father grabbed his gun from its holster, took aim, and fired. The buck went down right away. Turning back to look at me, he had a big smile on his face. After what felt like an eternity, he told me that I had his blessing to marry Esther, but he cautioned me to remember that day. I helped him load the buck and then rode off before he could change his mind or show off more hunting skills. Returning to the farm, I found Esther and asked her to ride with me to one of our favorite spots. We were standing beneath a flowering dogwood tree next to the river when I asked her to marry me. She tried to pretend she hadn't heard me, just so I would ask it again before she finally said yes. So spring faded into summer and we decided on a wedding date of August 12th. We had a big party to celebrate the engagement and I started working on our future home with the help of my father and brother. It seemed as though nothing could go wrong. But, if it had all gone right, I wouldn't be here now. As August drew closer, I found my nerves getting the better of me. My stomach was causing me pain from time to time, with the frequency increasing with each day. Weddings in a small town are a big deal, and everyone gets involved in one way or another. The house was complete by the 1st of August, and I moved in to make sure everything was right for our future family. Esther wanted to see it, but I told her she would have to wait for the night of the wedding as it was supposed to be a surprise for her. A few days before the wedding, I confided in my father how my nerves had been bothering me and he assured me it was normal to have butterflies going into such a big event. I took his word for it, though I wish I hadn't. The day before we were to be wed, I found myself in a lot more pain. Not wanting to be a bother to anyone, I decided to take a walk and try to calm down. There was a trail near my new house that went along the river and I thought the calm of the water would help. As I walked, I found the pain growing worse and worse in my stomach until I felt like I was about to split open. I held my right side as I walked, feeling worse and worse with each step. My vision started to blur and I felt myself falling off the bank into the river below. I passed out and the pain finally subsided. When I woke, I was back at my house, unsure of how I got there or what day it was. As I climbed out of bed, I heard a knock at the door, followed by the voice of my brother, asking why I wasn't at the wedding. Panicking, I yelled back that I was on my way as I dressed and ran to the door. By the time I got outside, he was gone, likely back to the ceremony to tell everyone I was coming. 
I hurried down the road, managing to arrive as several guests were leaving. I tried to stop them, but they ignored me as they walked past. I heard a few whispers from people wondering why I didn't show up, some even saying they expected as much. My own father said he wasn't surprised that I backed out after being as nervous as I was. I was starting to get upset with them for ignoring me when I saw Esther sitting on the steps of the altar. She was staring off as in shock, and I walked up to her expecting some kind of response, only to be met with silence when I apologized. I reached my hand out to touch her shoulder, but it went right through. She shuddered and looked around, putting her hand up to where I had tried to touch her. As the realization hit me, I stumbled backwards, landing on the ground. I was dead. But that couldn't be. I would know if I had died, right? I thought about falling into the river, how I had floated away. Where is my body? Someone had to be looking for me. They had to know I wouldn't just leave the love of my life at the altar. I tried again to comfort Esther, to get her attention, but nothing worked. She sat there, a blank look on her face, for hours. All the guests had gone home, and the food was starting to spoil before her friends finally convinced her to go inside and lie down. I followed her, sitting on the bed and watching as she finally drifted off to sleep. The next few days were rough for both of us. She kept asking why I had left her, crying and refusing to eat anything. All I could do was watch as she became a completely different person. The light in her eyes that I had fallen in love with was gone, replaced by darkness. Her friends finally convinced her to eat small amounts, but she only did it to make them go away. Over the next several months, she faded more and more. Her parents tried to make her leave the room, but she just sat stone-faced as they did everything from asking politely to yelling at her. Even they eventually gave up, leaving her alone with only me to watch as she withered away. By late November, I started going out for walks when she slept. The pain of seeing her like that was unbearable. At first, I would only go out for a few minutes at a time, but I started staying out for longer and longer. After a few walks, I got the idea to start looking for my body, hoping in the back of my mind that finding it would somehow break the spell over Esther and she would be able to move on and find happiness again. I walked for miles every night looking up and down the river. After a while, I forgot what I was even doing out there. The nights seemed to be growing darker and the days were barely distinguishable from the night. The wind blew snow all around me, but I didn't feel any cold. One morning, I returned from my stroll to find the bed where Esther usually laid empty. I felt relief surge through me as I believed she had finally moved on. Then I heard crying from the front room. Walking through the house, I found Esther's mother on a chair near the fireplace, sobbing into her hands. The rest of the family was gathered as well, but Esther was nowhere to be seen. I was only able to take in the scene for a moment before it faded, darkness taking over again. As the light returned, I found myself in the cemetery. It was spring, and a crowd was gathered around one of the graves. As I walked up, a feeling of grief overwhelmed me, and I heard someone say she died of a broken heart. As I looked around at the crowd, I saw someone dressed in white standing at the gate to the grounds. Esther had a look of rage on her face as she vanished before my eyes. I tried to find her, explain what happened, but she kept disappearing. I walked constantly around the town looking for her. She would show herself from time to time always with a look of hatred before leaving again. The buildings around us faded and crumbled, but we remained. The small town became nothing more than a legend, and we stayed. Some days, I don't even remember why we do this, play this game. Some days, I can't remember why it was supposed to be the happiest day of our lives. Mm-hmm.